The first chapter, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and with, without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, we have a few selections with the children and adults choir. Happy Sabbath.
my feet on solid ground. Happy Pentecost. Let's give the Lord some praise, because he is so faithful. I give my glory to the Most High. You deserve my over me I have to thank you for making me praise I put them up keep it with my time so I die you give me light and let me know that I'm right on the path I'm supposed to be on even when I'm persecuted on righteously Jesus is so faithful Right now, we're going to sing along, all right? <laughs> I just want to thank you, Lord, for being so faithful, Lord. Can you sing it with me? Thank you, Lord. Choir. Thank you, Lord. For being so faithful, Lord. Thank you, Now you. over me. Thank you for making me precise. Even when my time's I die, you give me light and let me know that I'm right on the path I'm supposed to be on. Even when I'm persecuted on righteously, Jesus is so faithful. Ooh, he can do anything. Only if you're faithful. With a small mustard seed of faith. Jesus be faithful. Clean. 
Happy Pentecost! Woo -hoo! Testing. Come on, give that choir another round of applause. Children's choir, too. It's a blessed day. Might as well keep it going. Praise it to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everybody in the name of Jesus. And peace to everybody on the line. We all know what day we're here for, right? Pentecost, right? Plan to God. The Jubilee. We should be happy because, hey, that, this day is going to set us free. Set the whole world free. 
it's something with, you know, you know, man, you know, that today end up lining up on Father's Day, which is one of those days they say, oh, you know, that ain't really in the Bible, so I don't see no problem with doing it. But now look at it here. You can be out eating with your father, but you will be missing Pentecost. See, they'll tell you ain't nothing wrong with it because you can't see it in the Bible, but when you look at it, it don't line up with the, what the Lord got going on. Now you run right head on to it, line up on this day here, what you going to do now? You going to keep Pentecost or you going to keep that? Because, you know, people want to get, you know, they get into the book and say, well, technically, if you can't read it, then ain't nothing wrong with it. But when you run into days like this, then you got to answer for it. You got to understand, you know, how the Lord got this thing set up. And it's a great day. It's a great day for the whole world, and it's a great day for people who are following God. Now, on the other hand, if you don't know God and you're doing your own thing, it ain't going to be so great for you. Because this is the day of Pentecost, but it's the year of the Lord's return. So we have to understand exactly what this is. And it's a great day to be celebrating on. Because, hey, us as a people, being that we don't know who we are as a whole, man, this is a beautiful thing to hold on. To know that the Lord got set up where we're going to be reestablished on how it's supposed to be. But we're going to open up, I want to read Deuteronomy chapter 4. Because we got a lot of, you know, you know, like they got coming up in about, what, a couple weeks, they're going to have the 4th of July, right? Which is supposed to be Independence Day was supposed to be, they were set free. We don't even bother with that because, hey, we got this day. This is our Liberty Day. This is our Jubilee. And, because we still in captivity, because you ain't, you, only way for you to get out of captivity is for you to go back home. But this is freedom of the whole world, and we know the whole world needs it because of the condition that it is in. But they use these day, those days and do things, but we're going to read Deuteronomy chapter 4. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. And we're going to read, start at verse 5. Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Go ahead. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. So this is Israel, and they was going into the land. But the Lord set them up with statutes and judgments. See, we got this thing called holidays that most people do, right? which ain't nothing but a corruption of holy day. So the Lord got his, all his stuff set up in line. God's plan is all in line, but yet we do other things, like they're going to be doing Independence Day. But it's not focused on what the Lord got set up, because people are real slick about it. They would say, you know, it ain't so bad, it ain't that. But they do that to tell you that all it ain't in the Bible, just to get your mind off track of doing what God said. So when it all boils down, you ain't doing nothing what God say. Because here we is on so-called Father's Day, and it's, they don't even know nothing about it. See, we come to church on the first day of the week. It ain't nothing wrong with that as long as the Lord established it. But he said right here, he said, Behold, I taught you statutes and judgments, even the Lord that God commanded me, that you should do them in the land where you go to possess it. Keep going. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. See, the Lord tell you, he said, this is our wisdom. See, right now, us as a whole, as a people, we, ain't, we basically nobody. You move in a neighborhood of other nationalities, guess what? They moving out. Because you are disdained people. And why are you disdain? Because of this right here. He told you to keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom. This is your will. That's why when you start to come back and turn back to the Lord and you start to do these things, people are amazed. Because, see, here's the thing. The Lord got this thing airtight, and you cannot learn about the Lord unless you go through Israel. That's the way it is. And that's the beautiful thing because our forefathers couldn't even read and write. But now you get down to this, and you got so-called so people like me who was a nobody that I can get up here and, and read and do this. So you got like other nationalities try to take over the church. The Lord ain't going to allow that. They just stole a lot of stuff from them. We got a lot of vengeance and everything. They steal everything. But you can't steal this word of God from us. You can't take it because you have to come through us to do it. So there's no other way. So you stole everything else that we got. Even our identity is taken, us as a people. But you can't take this word. You try to take this word, you'll be over 
worshiping some stones and some rocks. Because the Lord is not going to allow you to do it the, do it the way that it was supposed to be written. You know why? Because you've got to come through Israel to get it. And if you don't come this way, you're going the wrong way. Because the Lord says it's only one way. You've got to empty through the door. Anything else is like a thief and a robber. So he said, therefore, keep this. Verse 6, he said, therefore, keep this and do this, for this is your wisdom. This is our wisdom. Now we start to teach this. We look like somebody. And understand in the sight of the nation, which what? We shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. See, once we start to turn around and do this, we start to see that, man, oh, these, these brothers got some wisdom and some understanding. Because this is what the Lord give us to get back to. It's a blessing that we can even come back to this. Verse 7. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? There is no other nation. And, you know, the Lord don't change. You can see, hey, no matter how bad and terrible we was, he's like, hey, I'm gonna still deal. I got to still deal with you. Because that was a promise with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which was passed down. He said, for what nation they're so great who have God so nigh unto them? As what? As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Yes, go ahead. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? See, this is, this is what we need. We need these statutes and judgment. But see, we, we are kind of the reason why the whole world is off course. They're off course because we haven't been here to teach them these things. He said, what nation is there so great and so statutes and judgments, so righteous in the law, which what? Which I set before you this day. Go ahead. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from the, thy heart all the days of thy life. So he said, hey, don't, don't forget that. And trust me, we know as a whole we forgot it. But the Lord is merciful. Go ahead. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. So he tells you to teach it. Make sure you, you pass this on to your sons and your sons' sons. Because without this, we ain't nothing. I mean, it is what it is. Without the word of God, Israel, it, it, hey, they probable for nothing. So we need this. Not to mention the whole world needed in, in, its, in its totality anyway. But let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, and pick it up at verse 16. Now, this is Jesus right here. Luke chapter 4 and 16. Go ahead. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. So notice the Lord, what he did. See, we're supposed to be Christ-like, right? That's when you start to notice some stuff. Because when, when I first got in it, it looked, this, this stuff looked strange. You see, because you're not used to it. You see brothers reading, one brother teaching, one brother reading. It was like, man, this just look weird. But then when you come in here and you read this, and you notice he says he came to Nazareth when he was brought up. As his custom was, he went in the synagogue, guess what, on the Sabbath day. So the Lord kept the Sabbath day. And he stood up. Guess what he stood up to do? He didn't stood up to Bible or nothing. He stood up to read. Open the book up, which is what we don't do enough of. But go ahead. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophets, he says. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. So he said he come to preach deliverance to the captives. Go ahead. And recovering of the sight to the blind. Go ahead. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Yes, sir. Go to, ahead. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He said he come to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And this is what this day, this day is pointing to. The year of the Lord. You have seven Sabbaths and then one day. And this is, this is very significant. But go ahead. Finish that. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. So he, read, he opened up the book. His custom was he kept the Sabbath day. So you want to be like Christ, you're going to keep the Sabbath day. Then also, after he read that, the priest accepted the year of the Lord, he closed the book. It's the reason why he closed the book. Because he had to accomplish something the first time. But when he come back, he's going to finish that. But we're going to go back and read exactly what he said. He said, and he, he said in the, and verse 20, he said, and he closed the book, and he, and he gave it to the minister and sat down, and what? 
And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. See, they was fastened on him because he right in the middle of that he cut it off. And it's the reason why he cut it off. Let's go read it. Let's go to Isaiah 61. Isaiah chapter 61. And pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 61 and 1. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. That's what we read, right? Go ahead. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive. So that's what we was reading, right? We just read that in Luke, right? But he ended up putting the book down, right? But go ahead. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Go ahead. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So that's pretty much where he closed it at, right? He closed it right there. And it's a reason that, because that wasn't what he was going to do on, and the, on the first time. When he was coming out the first priest for his three and a half years, that, that, that wasn't part of it. So that's why he closed the book. But then now, he opened that. He op now we can go back and read it and see why he didn't read the second part. Go ahead. And the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. So he let them know, hey, this is the day of vengeance. He said this. And, and also, notice it's the day of vengeance, but it's also to comfort them that I'm on, right? So if you're with God, it's good. If you ain't with God, we're going to find out. It's not going to be so great for you. So he said, he said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of his vengeance, our God, to comfort all them that mourn. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yes, sir. Go ahead. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Yes, sir. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Yeah. And, and trust me, we need all that. He said to appoint them that are mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, oil for joy, for mourning. The garments of praise. Look, hey, we've been in a bad state for a long time. The scripture said, is Israel a born slave? You went straight from Egypt and back into captivity again. We was only in the land for a moment. We stay in captivity because we don't do what we're supposed to do. And that is to our own detriment. We, why would you want to leave the most high and you got everything you need? Lord said he's going to put you high up on all. All you have to do is follow me. But Israel, of course, you know how we are. We're stiff-necked people. So this is the condition we're in. But, let's, but let's, go, let's, go to Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. We're going to read one verse here, 34 and 8. Go ahead. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. See, it's the, this is the day of the Lord. He's showing you this is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And what? And the year of recompense. And the year of recompense for what? For the controversy of Zion. So he said this is the recompense. See, this is why we all believe. This is showing you why we believe. You can look, look at this thing. Isn't there still controversy in Zion? Yes, sir. See, if, you, if that wasn't true, and, and, and Israel was in their land, it, it should be straight peace over there. That's how you know. It's been thousands of years, right? And it's still fighting over that land. And the Lord's going, he's going to settle it, say that right there, right? Read that again. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. So at that day, at that day, he's going to settle the controversy. He's going give to give that land back to who it rightfully is supposed to be. But we can see right now is how you know you can believe you can look at it right now. See, when you're dealing with the Lord, you can look at stuff right now. Not just I'm telling you something to you to just believe. You can look at this thing and see it right now. They still fighting over there. Ain't no peace over there. They still bombing. They still doing a whole lot of stuff over there. So we know because you, if you didn't believe, you would think after a thousand some years that it should be some peace over there. Right. And if it still ain't no peace and the Lord tell you, I am going to straighten it out. I'm going to settle the controversy. Because, hey, the land was parted and they go back and forth with our brothers Esau and Ishmael. But that's another lesson. But that's what's going on and taking place. So we can see that. But let's go further. Let's go to Leviticus. 
Leviticus chapter 23. See, when you start doing the Lord's feast days, they all line up. And it's God plan for mankind. Israel and as, as the world as a whole, they reject God and they always have. But now we're going to get into Le Leviticus 23, which is going to show you the Lord's feast days. Leviticus chapter 23. And pick it up at verse 1. 23 and 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them. Now he said, we got to keep this in mind because you got, you got a lot of people. See, when you get people with these so-called old school Hebrews or you so-called Jehovah's Witness, they, they always come out and say things like, that's the Mosaic law. But countless times you can read through here, he said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, where in the heck did they get the Mosaic law from? If the Lord said it. See, they ain't open this book up and read. So he said right here, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord. He concerned, concerning the feast of Moses. Concerning the feast of the Lord. And concerning the feast of God. This is what it's saying. But go ahead. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. So these are holy. And it's a convocation. We get to come. That's a gathering. Go ahead. Even these are my feasts. He said, these are my feasts. So when you do the, these things, because you have some people say, oh, yeah, you know, the stuff that's in the book, you know, if you do that, that's just good. But, you know, you ain't, you ain't got to do it. But there ain't nothing wrong with you doing it. Hey, Lord, tell you, these are my feasts. But they lack understanding of what this is all about. But go ahead. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Here's another holy convocation, which we keep every seventh day. Holy convocation. He says, six days shall work be done, but the Sabbath is, a, is of rest and holy convocation. That's a gather. What do he say? You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So he's telling you right there, point blank, you ain't doing no work. And it's keep in mind, it's the Sabbath of the Lord. For whatever reason, people want to make it seem like it's somebody else's. This is what God put together. He put this together in Genesis. It wasn't no Jews around, because they want to say stuff like, when you start talking about this word and all that, that's for the Jews. You know, that's, what, that's for the Jews. You read, you read the Sabbath day up, you, you look that up, they said Christians got their day, but, but that, well, it was the first day, but the seventh day, that's for the Jews. We just read right here. They said, this is, for, this is the Lord, Sabbath of the Lord, right? Yes, sir. So there ain't no way you're trying to separate that. But then again, hey, then what are you doing if you're keeping the first day? See, we're on the first day, but we're here for a reason. We're honoring the Lord. We're doing exactly what's written in this book. So he said, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do, you, you say, it shall, it shall be a Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. See, that's another thing. He's telling you these are the feasts because, you know, people do a whole lot of stuff like supposed to be communion, which is they replace that with, from, with the Passover. And then on top of that, you're supposed to do it in the season, not every first Sunday of the month. See, that's, 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 that's showing you got some total different doctrine. You're not doing what's written in here. He said, these are the feasts of the Lord, verse 4, even holy convocation, which you shall proclaim in their season. These are seasonal. Skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Once again, notice he said it again right here, right? See, he kept saying, and if you keep reading from chapter to chapter from chapter, he keeps saying, the Lord said, it's a reason why he said that. Because people are going to say things like Mosaic law. Or you ain't got to do that. He said, he said it again. He said at the first verse, we came down to the ninth verse. He said the same thing. He said, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying what? Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when, when ye be come into, into the land which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. See, the Lord got all his feast there. It's, it's set up around our, our coach. And he's letting you know, and we're going to get into this, he said, when you shall reap the harvest there, then you should bring a sheep of the first fruit of the harvest to the priest. So you can be waved. But this, 
This is significant because it's, it's showing you Christ right here. And it's also showing a way up for us as mankind to get back to God. He said, then he said in verse 9, he said, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, you shall, when you come in the land which I shall give you, you shall reap the harvest thereof. Then you shall bring a sheep of the first fruit of the harvest unto the priest. Go ahead. And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So he's telling you, he said, on the morrow after the Sabbath. And we're going to find something significant with that when we start to read on. He said, and he, he said, and he said, wave it. So he had to go before the priest to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. Because that's what we hear. We're here on the morrow after the Sabbath, right? For it to be accepted for you. But go ahead, skip down to 15. Go ahead. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. See, that's from the, from, from the being accepted, from the Passover. And he's letting you know here. This has come the Lord. I think it was three days, three nights. We're showing you right here. He said, he said, and you should count the morrow after the Sabbath, for, for you should be brought a sheep of the way offering. Seven Sabbaths should be completed. And then what? Even until the morrow after the seven Sabbaths shall ye number 50 days. 50 days. And that's what Pentecost means. It means 50. Go ahead. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So he's telling you, he said, then you should offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Let's go further. No, skip down 21. Go ahead. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be in holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work therein. See, notice he said servile work. When we, read, when we read about the Sabbath day, he said no work. But then he said no servile work on this. Why? Because here he left, it leaves some room for cooking and stuff according to the feast. But go ahead. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. This shall be a statue forever throughout... Your generations. Never stop it. Let's go further. Let's go to Matthew 28. Matthew chapter 28. We're going to read one verse. Matthew 28 and verse 1. 28 and 1. Go ahead. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Okay, so now we see him right here. This was after Jesus was crucified. They said, he said, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Notice it's the end of the Sabbath. It's still the same. You got the Sabbath, and then you got what? The first day of the week, right? So he said, at the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came what? Came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchers. Okay, so you, you're seeing that, right? But let's, let's go to Matthews, and we're going to pick the same thing up here. I'm sorry, John. Let's go to John 20. John chapter 20. And pick it up at verse 1. I just wanted you to see that, that hey, it was, it was tomorrow after the Sabbath. And we're going to see what else it is. Go ahead. 20 the, and 1. Go ahead. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark. So she came when it was yet dark. And guess what she saw? Go ahead. Unto the sepulcher. Okay. That's and, the sepulcher that Jesus was in. But go ahead. And see if the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter. And to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. See, they didn't quite understand that the Lord had raised half a day ago. They didn't really get that, understand that, but he had already risen. But go ahead. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter. Go ahead. And came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. So they saw the clothes lying. And this is show you something significant right here. Notice when they came to the grave, that's what it is, came to the grave site, they, they were looking for Jesus, right? Looking for his body, right? Notice his body was gone. You know, because you go to funerals right now and they tell you some people ain't dead. And you see their body right there. 
I'm like, they ain't dead. No, they look dead to me because I'm looking right at them. Because this is showing you an example of that with somebody, they, they, when they ain't dead no more, you don't see nobody. You know, it ain't, it ain't like you're going to do a three-car molly on if you If you see a body that ain't dead. But the Lord's showing you something, even within something here. He's letting you know, hey, if you, if you, don't, if you don't see, when somebody ain't dead, you don't see nobody. But go ahead, finish that. Then coming Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and see if the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Yes, sir. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. So they went away. They, they went away because they, they didn't see it. They don't know what's going on. They weren't sure what was happening. But Mary was still there. And we're going to watch this. Watch out. Watch this. Um, go ahead. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And she wept. She, as, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. So she was look, crying, looking to it, because she's like, I don't know what they did with, 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 with my Lord. I don't know what's going on. So she's crying. But watch this. Go ahead. And see if two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. So she, they had two angels was there. Watch what they told her. Go ahead. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest so thou? They, they asked her, why are you weeping? They said, why are you sad? Go ahead. She said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Yeah, so she figured that maybe the Pharisees or something had got in there and, and stole the body. So she, she don't understand. But what would the angels tell her? Go ahead. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. So she saw Jesus there. When she was just talking to them, she turned around and saw Jesus. And what? And knew not that it was Jesus. See, when you, when you risen like this, hey. Hey, you, put, you, could just, you could do a whole lot. So he's standing there right there. She don't even know it's him. But watch what he said. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? So he asked, he said, Why are you weeping? And, who, and who, who are you looking for, right? Go ahead. She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him. So she thought he worked there. She was like, He must be working here. So what she say? Sir, if thou art born him hence, Tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. He told, she said, if you, if you took him somewhere, let, let me know where he's at, and I, and I can go get him. Watch what Jesus said, verse 16. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni. So she, he, she turned around, and, 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 and he, she recognized who he was. She said, Rabboni. Now notice this right here, what Jesus said. Go ahead. Which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. See, he told her, don't touch me. Because that's how it was set up. And before, with the wave sheep offering, to be accepted. That's why it's the seventh year of the Lord. He told her, don't touch me, because he had to go before. Remember the scripture said he had to go before the priest? So he had to be accepted. Watch what he said. Go ahead. For I am not yet ascended to my father. See, that's why you, can't, you couldn't touch him. Because he had to go and be ascended before the father. Because then once he be accepted, then that opens the door for all of us. Go ahead. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. See, that's letting you know, hey, he's the first fruits, what we, which we read. He's the first fruit to be accepted. That's why with that wave sheep offering, it had to, he had to wave it before the priest. So, he had to, so Jesus had to be offered, he had to be offered up, he had to go up and be waved before the priest. That's why she couldn't touch him. So that's showing you that right there. But let's go further. You finished that? Yes, yeah, sir. you did. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. And pick it up at verse 20. 15 and 20. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20. Go ahead. But now is Christ risen from the dead. So he got risen from the dead, which we, which we read. We saw that, right? And also we saw that he was risen. You know, she said when he said coming to the first day of the week, that was what? The morrow after the Sabbath. So he said, now Christ is risen from the dead and what? And become the first fruits of them that slept. See, he's the first fruits of the people who sleep. 
Sleep is, when you talk about God, to us, we just talk about taking a nap, right? The Lord said, call sleep is like when you dead. But he said, he the first fruits of, and it always amazed me how people say, you go, when you die, you, you go to heaven. You go straight to heaven to be with the Lord, right? They say that stuff. Why is it that Jesus was in the grave for three days and three nights? If, if why, how come he didn't go straight up there? That, 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 that kills me all the time, but it is what it is. When, you, when you're teaching a lie, hey, you're teaching a lie. He said, but now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. What does that mean when he say the first fruits? When you use first, what does that mean? That's telling you there's more behind there. Nobody don't use first unless something else behind unless you got two, three, four, and five, right? So he's the first fruits of them that slept. Go ahead. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Which is what happened in the garden. What you going to read here? Go ahead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So the Lord is showing you. If he's the first fruits and those that are like Christ that is coming, we can come right behind him. If you walk with him. He said, for as Adam all die, even so Christ shall they all be made alive. Right? But what? But every man in his own order. See, it's, it's, you got to go in your own order. And what order is that? Christ the first fruits. Yeah, because he had to, he's that wave sheep offering. He had to, he, when we talk about getting up under his blood, hey, it's a, it's the Lord got a plan all the way across the board. And we have to follow that to get into his kingdom. So he's the first fruits. Because without him, hey, we were all done. And everybody know that. But he had to be waved. And then they said, right, but every man is on order. Christ the first fruit. And afterwards, what? They that are Christ at his coming. And after that is they that is Christ at his coming. Those are the ones who's walking with the Lord, who's doing what does say the Lord, who's keeping it. How can you not keep this day? This, this, this is the day of the first fruits. This is the feast of weeks. And this is for salvation for mankind at all. And you just do away with it. People don't understand. They don't understand what the Lord is trying to do for us. And it's a shame. Let's go further. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts 2, and pick it up at verse 1. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. See, they, they was notice here. This is not the worst, because see, what they want to do, they want to nail all this stuff, say this stuff is nailed to the cross, and you don't have to do that stuff. You know, it's all good, it's fine, but you don't have, you ain't got to be bothered with that. Look right here, after the Lord was already risen, and if you go back and read, you'll notice that this is the year he's talking about because he abode with them. You read chapter 1, we ain't going to read it. But if you read chapter 1, notice he was there with them for 40 days, the scripture said. 40 days he was with them. And we all know, 10 days later, we hit Pentecost, right? So he said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together with one accord, one place. They kept Pentecost. It wasn't done away with a nail to a cross. They still keeping it. And notice what's happening. It's a blessing right here that's going on. People out doing Father's Day, and then you're going to miss your blessing. Miracle happened on there. You got Pentecostal church that don't even know that it means 50. Don't even understand. What are you doing? Do you ever open up a dictionary or a psychopedia? I know I'm a little older. They young, but they don't use psychopedia. They Google now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but still, Google it. But notice that. Here, you got to understand what it is that you're doing. So he said, at verse 1, he said, when the day of Pentecost fully come, they all was on one accord, one place. So they was there keeping the Pentecost. And, and guess what happened then? On, according to how the Lord set things up. Because the Lord told them that, hey, the Holy Ghost is going to come up on them. But go ahead, verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a, of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. See, and... and it, it was a miracle that was happening here. We're going to see what was happening. Because they, they used some of this stuff. But go ahead. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And they sat upon each of them. So, see, this, this is some of that folly they try to take and say that people are speaking in tongues. But when you read this and you get into the scriptures, you will see that what they was, they was doing, they were speaking language. And we're going to see that. But go ahead. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Go ahead. See, they, they speak, speaking with tongues is knowing another language. 
It's not sitting up here babbling. I'm just, <laughs> no, and you don't know what the heck they saying. That, that, boy, you, you, just don't, you just don't even understand how far and how foolish stuff is. Till you start to get some understanding of the Lord and you start to look at that stuff, you be like, man, how did I ever tolerate any of this foolishness? But that just shows you how spiritually dead you was. When you sitting up there, they telling you to be holy, you got to be speaking some gibberish. Slapping people upside the head. But that's not what was going on here. What was going on here? Hey, the Lord was giving them a message here. He was pouring the Spirit. They were speaking different language. That's what tongues is. Because they tell you in the Scripture, you read Paul. He tell you, hey, if you don't understand, you might as well keep your mouth shut. But go ahead. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So you had Israel, which was scattered out already. And they all spoke different languages from the lands that they was in. But the Lord made sure they got this message. So when the, when the apostles was up there speaking, they, they were translating in their ear. So you got different nationalities here, and they all hearing in their own ear. They're going to tell you that, but go ahead. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? So they all looked at each other like, man, ain't these Galilean brothers here? <laughs> they all, ain't they Galileans? And what? And how hear we every man in our own tongue when we were born? So they was trying to figure out how is it that we hearing all this stuff. But go ahead. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So they, they heard all these different nationalities. They heard, say, man, we hearing this. This is amazing. But then again, you always going to have somebody. You know how Israel is. You always got somebody got something to say. Go ahead, verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean is this? So they understand. What, what the other brothers say? Others mock and say, these men are full of new wine. <laughs> so you always got some, you're going to always have some, some adversaries, even within your brothers. You know, they, they, they here up here mocking it. Talking about new wine. Now, I know we all, this is the feast, so hey, you might have a little wine. They figured, hey, this is what they was doing then. This is what we're going to do. They said, these brothers started early. <laughs> they ain't even wait. But go ahead. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. So he had to let them know, hey man, hold on. Because they like thinking they drinking. You, you got to nip that stuff in the bud because it'll start spread. He had to tell them, no, nah, hold on. He said, but Peter stand up with the eleven, lift up his voice, and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all you dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for what? For these men are not drunken. He said, man, they ain't drunk, man. Go ahead, why? As ye suppose, seeing it be but the third hour of the day. See, that's, see, that's, how, the, that's how we do it. So that's be like 9 o'clock in the morning. So, you know how the Lord time is, because the evening in the morning, right? So he, it's about 9 o'clock. He said, man, they ain't drinking this early. Go ahead. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, save God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. So he let me know, hey, I'm going to pour out my spirit. But this is what, if you read the first chapter, Jesus told him the Holy Ghost was going to come. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Go ahead. And oh. your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. See, he's letting you know, hey, this is what's going to be going on. But go ahead. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will shoot wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. See, this is when we get into, we get into here. We get getting right here into Pentecost, the year of Pentecost. He said, I will show wonders in heaven, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. Hey, we've seen that it's two types. It's going to be rejoicing for the people who's following with God. But on the other hand, hey, it's going it's to get some of this fire right here. But go ahead. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. See, you see, this day haven't came yet, but this, this is the day of Pentecost, but it's the year. 
It's the year of it. The Lord is showing you something right here. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we see what, what time period we're talking about. But let's go into it and finish this off. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Joel 2, and pick it up at verse 1, 2 and 1. Go ahead. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. See, that's what's going to happen. You got the seven trumpets blowing. You got that seven trump blowing, right? He said, blow you the trumpet and sound an alarm. That's what you do when you have in war. Man do that all the time. When you have war, that's when you sound an alarm. We do that here. People don't even realize that. On Tuesday early in the morning, about 9, 10 o'clock, the alarm go off. That's to show you what war is. That's to show you to get prepared. Just we run the sirens. You hear that same siren when you have like an earthquake or something, that siren go off. He's showing you that. So they practice that. So he said, blow you the, the trumpet in Zion. We even do that now. Sound the alarm in the holy mountains. Go ahead. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Hey, hey it, it is at hand. And we can see why we need the Lord to come. Because we all twisted up right now. Man, it's off course so bad that he didn't went so far that there ain't no turning around now. We know it ain't no turning around when you, you can have a kid and you can say, I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl. We're going to let them choose. That just shows you how messed up man is. We didn't got so far off course. Hey, he's got to come with the fire. See, I know, I used to, before I even got in the word, I used to hear, let the Lord come to fame and fire, but never put two and two together. Why is he coming in fame and fire? We just didn't take the time to think, well, okay, the Lord coming in fame and fire, but why? Because we're doing something right, or we're not doing something right, because he's going to burn us up. Obviously, we got to, if you ain't read nothing, else, you should know that, hey, we did something wrong. Why would God want to come burn people up? Because they're not right. But then you can see right now we're in the last days, because we can't even turn, we can't even tell from what a boy and a girl is. You can't even tell. They're trying to figure it out. Just take their clothes off and look. Yeah, we see boy, we see girl. It's just that simple. But we didn't, we didn't go on the wrong way. When you go too far off on the deep end, hey, the only thing left is for fire. That's the only thing left. Because we refused to hear. We didn't get too far to the point of no return. But that's where we at. Verse, where you at? Verse 2? Verse 2. Go ahead. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there have not been ever the light, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So we ain't seen nothing like this yet. It hasn't happened. It just hasn't happened. Skip down to verse 10. Skip to 10. Go ahead. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. See, we, we have some earthquakes here, right? But you, it ain't nothing like this where the sun and the moon get dark. You ain't seen nothing like this before. He said, the earth, therefore, and the heavens shall tremble. We, we talking about the sun and the moon shaking. You ain't seen nothing like that. We, we be scared when the earth shake or you have a look. You ain't seen nothing like this where you look out in the sky and stars shaking and stuff. That's, that's going to be a terrible day. He's letting you know that. He said, the earth shall quake before them. Verse 10, the heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall darken. Go ahead. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide who it? Who heard that? The day of the Lord is terrible. And who can abide? Ain't nobody heard nothing like that. They teach you about God, he love you, and he will never forsake you. Hey, this day is terrible, and if you ain't doing it, you out somewhere else, hey, woe unto you. How can you get part of the plan if you, don't, you, ain't, you ain't participating in it right now? Come on, people. Let's go, let's go. Skip down to verse 28. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. See, we like the people saying, that's why some people kind of talk they got teachers and you know why you got women as preachers and all that. No, this is talking about in the end. This is what we, we read. So that's what this spirit is about. He said, he said, it should come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
This is at the end. Go ahead. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your, mon your young men shall see visions. So that's what we're reading next, right? But go ahead. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. So you see these wonders, right? So it's already shaking, right? Well, let's get some more of these wonders. What else? Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. So you got blood and fire, pillars of smoke. Go ahead. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord have said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So he's letting you know, hey, if you following here doing his will, because we know it's another side of this coin. If you're not doing his will, but the ones who are, hey, it's going to be deliverance. So, so much for people who shall call the Lord shall be saved. Hey, you'll be saved if you're doing what you're supposed to. But if you ain't, hey, I, who you think that this, flood, this fire and all that and brimstone is for? The people always say one thing, but they never tell you what about the other side. Who you think that's for? They always, when even when somebody died, they say they all everybody went to heaven. Well, who, what, is, what is hell for? People need to understand and make sure they understand what's going on. Let's move further. Let's go to Isaiah 13. This ain't a pretty day for the ones who ain't following the Lord. Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13, and pick it up at verse 9. 13 and 9. Go ahead. Behold, the day of the Lord coming, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger. That's all we've been hearing right about this day, right? Go ahead. To lay, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. For the stars of the heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun, the sun shall be darkened in his going forth. That's what we keep reading about, right? During this day, right? Which is, which is the year of the Lord. Go ahead. And the moon shall not cause their light to shine. See, that's, see, that's to show you here, it hit this within itself. Hey, there ain't never been a day like this. So nobody can tell you, hey, oh, that's past, or that's not going, or the kingdom of God is here. <laughs> you, you, people fall, because people say that. Like, oh, the kingdom, it, it came. Jesus said the kingdom of God has been here. It's already been here. The, you know, when he came, he fulfilled that. That's what he did. You ain't seen this. You ain't seen no sun and moon turn to blood. You ain't seen none of that. This is the day of the Lord we read. He said, behold, the day of the Lord cometh, right? This is his day. Crude with wrath and fierce anger. We ain't seen none of that. To lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners there. Is there still sinners out here right now? <laughs> so, it's, hey, the day of the Lord ain't came yet, people. Go ahead. 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. Go ahead, brother. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. See, when you get down to this end, the Lord going to do so much killing on this day that <laughs> Man gonna be he said you gonna he gonna be as precious as, as fine gold. To the point this is this is this is how terrible it is. But then again, we can see with our own eyes why the world the way it is, and it can't it's no turning around. You can't you can't sit up there and tell people, you try to tell somebody about, hey, this is gonna come, this is they be like, Psh, I ain't think about that, man. I ain't worried about that. They don't care. But it is what it is. But go ahead. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So he said, hey, he's going to be, he gonna be few in between any men. He's going to be precious because the Lord going to kill him up. But go ahead. Therefore I will shake the heavens. Well, we talked about that, right? Heavens being shaken. Go ahead. And the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Hey, it's going to happen. In his fierce anger. Go ahead. Finish that. And it shall be as the chase roll. And as a sheep that no man taketh up, they shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. See, this is, this is what it is. But this is the Jubilee. We're we, we going to read some of that to show you, hey, you know, that's what was happening. Every 50th year, this is what took place on Pentecost. He's showing you. We're going to show you that. But this is just goes to show you, hey, man here. See, when you read 15, and we're after all this stuff that go on, because whenever you have a disaster in the world, some natural stuff that go on. Man always talk about we're going to rebuild, right? 
But when you when the Lord get done with them, it ain't going to be like, we're going to rebuild. Hey, he's going to be like, I'm just going to go home, get me something to eat. I don't want, I don't want no more problems. I don't want to, I don't want to deal nothing. Like in 14, he said, and it shall come, and he said, as a chafro, as a sheep that have taken up, they shall every man turn to his own people and flee to your own land. You go into your own land. The Lord said, hey, hey, I'm They're going to say, hey, I'm done. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. Let's go further. Let's go to Leviticus 25. And we're going to see that. This was practice always. See, the Lord got all his days. It's all set up. And it's showing you his plan. Israel was keeping this. The Lord was teaching this here. Leviticus 25 and read 13. 25 and 13. Go ahead. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. See, he was showing you this is what they was doing then. But he's showing you right here what it is to come for the whole world. See, what the Lord did in Egypt was just in Egypt. But Israel scattered out all over the world. And he's going to deal, deal with man that got us all over the world. So he said, this is the year of Jubilee. It shall, he said, shall every man return to his possession. That's why it was no coincidence when the Lord got done. Every man has a chase road. They're going to go back to their own land. Because this is foretold. This is how you know the plan of God is lined up and airtight. He got it set up telling you what's going to happen, and it is. That's why the scriptures say, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasures. It's going to stay on course. He's showing you what's going to happen before that. You got all these other gods, you got Muslims, you got Buddhists, all that. They don't teach you what to come. They don't tell you what's going to happen. They, that's how you know. Say, why you believe in the book and why you believe in God? Because you can read stuff and say, man, this look, this lining right up. And he can show you that. Like, is it controversy over Zion? Let me look that up. Yeah, they still have controversy over there. You can go back to history and show and line this thing up. That's why the Lord said, hey, I am God. There's none else. Declaring the end from the beginning. So you can see, hey, this is what's lined up. This is how it's going to go. It's going to line up. And see, let me see what you can do to stop it. Because it ain't going, it's going to go on just like he said. He's telling you what's going to happen. That's why people don't see this and see what's going on. But let's go further. Let's go to Matthew 24. Let's deal with the end. Because that's the day we in, right? Matthew 24. And pick it up at verse 29. Matthew 24 and 29. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. See, we already seen that, hey, the Lord coming while the moon and the stars be dark, right? So, so much for you going to be righteous, right? Because he ain't coming till after the tribulation. He said immediately after tribulation, those days of people talking, oh, yeah, well, you ain't got to worry about tribulation because we're going to be gone. He said, hey, the Lord ain't coming until afterwards. He said, me, I tribulate, so the, so the days that it said the sun be dark and the moon shall what? Not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. Which is what we were reading. Go ahead. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So he gonna have, he gonna sh he's shaking the heavens up. But go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. So, so the Lord's coming in heaven. Notice right here, most of the people out here are mad. I thought everybody loved Jesus, right? I thought they love him. Why, when you read in here, they say they mourning? Why they mad? You know how they say, you mad, huh? <laughs> you mad. <laughs> why you mad? Because the Lord right there. Because you ain't doing his will. So that's why, you, that's why you mad. He said, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of earth mourn. They mad. They, so, so much for them loving Jesus, right, bro? Man. They ain't loving him right here. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. With power and great glory, because we know what's going on about to take place. He said, hey, man, you had your time all the way up from all the sons of Adam, from Shem, Ham, and Japhat. Hey, it's over. Your iniquity is filled. It's done right now. Your time of rulership. you. See, that's how good God is. He gave, you know, no man was going to mess up. He gave all them a chance to rule. He gave Ham a chance, and the Lord started with the younger first. Ham was the youngest. Hey, go ahead and rule, which we know is like the Africans. Gave them a chance, they messed up. Boom, Shem, your time. All the sons of Shem gave them a chance, they messed up. Boom, j time. That's why it's no coincidence that j ruling ruling the world. Why? Because this is their time. But we're in the day right now, it's about to be cut off, and we're at the end of that. So he's telling them right here. But go ahead, read verse 31. 
And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. Because when that trumpet's blowing, that seven trumpet, it's a rap, right? Go ahead. And they shall gather to gather together as elect from the four winds. That's Israel. He got to gather them together from the four winds. Why? Because then again, you can see prophets are here. We scatter out all over. You can see some black Chinese. Just go on over there. They there? <laughs> they, we everywhere. The Lord said the four winds. That's north, south, east, and west, right? We scatter all over the place. Like, what's up, brother? He be speaking a different tongue. I'm going to need some of them angels to translate for me. But the Lord's telling you that, and we scattered like that. Only people scattered like that. Go ahead. From one end of heaven to the other. So he said we're going to be from one end of heaven to the other, and the Lord going to gather us on this day. But let's go further. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. We're going to read this again. Go ahead. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So now we understand that. The first fruits that slept. Go ahead. Skip down to uh, 23. Go ahead. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, the they that are Christ at his coming. So we understand that part. Now let's skip down to verse 52. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Notice this, that seven trump being played, right? So we know what time period we're in. We're right at the end. We're at the year of Pentecost. He said, in the morning, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and what? He said, what's going to happen? The dead, right, shall be raised incorruptible. Who is the dead? Hey, the people who died in Christ. On that seventh day, they're going to be raised. Why? Because we read that Jesus was that first fruits, right? That wave sheet bundle, right? And he said, we also understood that after that is day at his coming, right? This is the coming right now, right at the end, at the seventh trump that we, we read about. He said, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the, set, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Go ahead. And we shall be changed. Yes, sir. Go ahead. For this incorruptible, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. Man, ain't this a beautiful thing? This is a great day. Go ahead. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immort immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And the Lord was doing that, and we read. He said it when we read in the Corinthians, we read about Adam, right? He, he, he brought death, but then Christ brought life. This is exactly what it is. Yeah, he put in, the Lord put in all, all the evil that the devil put on, he's putting it up under his feet. He's showing you this right here. Let's move further. Let's go back to Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25, and pick it up at verse 8. Leviticus 25 and verse 8. Go ahead. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto, unto thee. So that's, what, that's how you get to Pentecost. He's saying number seven Sabbaths. And watch this, though. But he said seven Sabbaths of years, right? Go ahead. Seven times seven years. And the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. So forty-nine years. Go ahead. Then thou shalt cause the trumpet of Jubilee. See, he had this going right all the way from back then. He had these practices every 50 years. He said, then thou shalt cause the trumpet of Jubilee. He's showing you the same thing he's going to do in the end. He's going to have that trumpet going high, and we've seen that the dead is going to be raised, right? But he's showing you this. He said, then, he said, then you should you cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on what? On the 10th day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. See, that, that's how we know the Lord's coming back on that day. We know it's going to come back on day, but it's on the year, the 50th year. But go ahead. And ye shall hallow the 15th, the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. See, this is the liberty we want. Forget that fourth liberty. They can keep that bell. I want this liberty. Go ahead. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man... Unto his possession. See, they was doing this every 50 years. You, you return every man to their possession. This was a jubilee. Even when you bar stuff, hey, when it came to this point, you had to, hey, if you bar something, you, didn't, it was, you was free from it. 
You go on to read more, you'll see he was free from that. You ain't have to, if you borrow something, people didn't loan. Lord said, don't do that. Because you're going to loan something to the poor. And he said, well, I ain't going to loan it to this brother, man, because he ain't going to pay it back. <laughs> no, nah. the Lord said, don't be like that. But then this is it's showing you freedom. This is freedom from all the stress. Freedom from all the things that we go through from day to day. The Lord is showing us and letting us know, hey, he's merciful. He's got a plan for us. We just got to hold on. Just like what I was saying yesterday. Hey, don't, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't even sweat it. Because the Lord got a big plan for us. Get, got a big plan for us. And it's a beautiful thing. But go ahead. And you shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you. So you see that every man go to their family, right? So, hey, and then back then we saw with the Lord, he did all that killing. Everybody said they're going to go back, right? But that's, the Lord is showing you this. But he's telling you what's going on. He's going to tell you what's going to happen on the end. He's showing you all the way through. It's a jubilee and the 50th year be unto you. And you said what? You shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you. You shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Go ahead. In the year of the jubilee, you shall return every man unto his possession. So the Lord tell you, in this year, every man going to go home and go to their own possession. He's showing you that, but this is also the year of the Lord. Let's keep going. You're almost done. Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16. And we're going to read two verses. 9 and 10. Go ahead. Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. So he told him, hey, it's seven weeks before you put the sickle to the corn and go ahead. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with the tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God have blessed thee. So he said, tell him, this is what you do on the land. They used to do that with the wave sheep offering. He's letting you know exactly how stuff's supposed to line up. Let's keep it going. Let's go to Acts 20. We almost done. Acts chapter 20, we're going to read one verse there. Acts 20 and 16, because we see, you know, how modern teachers tell you, you know, they don't, that we, this stuff is done away with, we don't have to do any of these things, but we're going to notice what Paul was doing here. Go to Acts 16, Acts 20 and verse 16, 20 and 16, go ahead. For Paul had determined to sell by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. So he, he, determined, he was selling. He was moving around preaching. Go ahead. For he hasted. If it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. So he, he hasted to get there, to keep this day. See, three times a year, and this is one of them, that you have to always go to Jerusalem. So keep in mind, hey, this ain't done away with. Paul was doing this. This, this is still good today. Don't let nobody tell you no, nothing different. Let's go to the last scripture, 1 Corinthians 16. First Corinthians 16, and pick it up at verse 1, 16 and 1. Go ahead. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Go ahead. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Go ahead. Skip down to verse, verse 7. For I, will, for I will not see you now by the way. But I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. And we're going to see something here. Go ahead. Because he said, hey, I'm not going to see you right now. But, hey, if the Lord permit. Because, you know, you got some people who say things like, you know, you're supposed to keep it in the land. You're supposed to go to Jerusalem. Which we did read that, right? And the scriptures do teach you that we're supposed to do that. But we're going to see right here that, hey, this is this, this right here. We're going to say verse 7. He said, for I was, he said, if I will not see you, by the way, but I trust that I tarry a while with you, for the, if the Lord permit. But what? But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. So he said, hey, I'm going to tarry here because he was traveling around. But he got noticed one thing. He kept 
the feast of God where, wherever he was at. Pentecost, plan of God. I thank y'all for y'all time. We welcome you and hope today's lesson increased your knowledge of the Holy Bible. CDs and DVDs of the Sabbath lessons are available. Please place your order and donation in an offering envelope and it will be filled on the next Sabbath. The children's class ages 5 to 12 starts at the same time as the adult Sabbath lesson in the assigned location. Bring your child so that their knowledge may be increased. Train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 and 6. Yes, sir. Adult question and answer is from 4.30 to 6.30 after the Sabbath lesson. We have question and answer every Wednesday, 5 p.m. via telephone conference line. The number and access code are located at the top of the lesson. Or see the live stream of the question and answer at www.thykingdomcome7.com. If you are interested in being baptized, please place your name on the list at the literature table. Remember to follow the dress code when attending our services. Men should remove all hats and all head coverings during service times. Women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or scarf during the service. Women should not wear tight-fitting pants or skirts or revealing clothing. Attire should be modest according to the Bible. If your child becomes restless during the Bible lesson, we encourage you to remove your child from the room until he or she has settled. Your tithes and offerings are always appreciated. Please place your tithes and offerings in an offering envelope and deposit it in the offering box. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for coming, and we hope to see you on the next Sabbath. Peace. Peace.